Good Thursday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. A beautiful morning in the Mid-South. We'll take a look at some of the webcams across the Mid-South here coming up in just a little bit. And if you're just getting up and joining us, it doesn't look like too much of a problem where rainfall is concerned across much of the area. Things are very quiet for right now and should remain that way for the next couple of days. We do not have too much to worry about in the way of problems until we get into later on during next week and we see the potential of more chances of showers and thunderstorms, some of which could be associated with Tropical Storm Nate, which has just formed about an hour and a half ago in the Gulf of Mexico down toward the Caribbean. And this is something that, again, will be important to monitor, especially if you are traveling into the course of the next couple of days. So if you have any plans for going down to the Gulf of Mexico, uh, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, anywhere in that area, that's where you're going to be able to watch a little bit more as to what goes on. Uh, in and around the Mid-South uh, for our particular forecast. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. If you are just joining us, again, thanks for stopping on by Periscope and Twitter. It is just past the top of the hour, and things are, again, uh, decently quiet for right now. We do have, again, the potential for some more problems in the Mid-South as we get into the course of the next couple of days, but we'll talk more about that for coming up in just a little while. If you are just joining us, again, this is your forecast information here in the blue bar, red bar here, up there, above wreg.com slash weather and also looking over here some more social media information for you as well. Welcoming in our friends on Facebook for right now we are live on three different platforms and keeping you updated when it comes to weather thanks to Bodhisattva 1001 for joining us on uh, Periscope for right now and everybody else for keeping track as to what's going on with the weather in the Mid-South early on for a Thursday morning. View from Germantown City Hall just north of Germantown High School looking off to the area in and around uh, portions of the Towers area of Poplar and Mendenhall in Memphis. Poplar Pike and Germantown Road also on the right hand side of your screen seen there through the trees looking good across the area for visibility purposes as traffic calms down around Germantown HS early this morning. More of our weather the bug cameras available at wreg.com slash webcams for more and keep an update on that uh, live on your computer screen for more there. Looking out over eastern Arkansas, we don't have again a great deal of activity taking place, but we did see a few very light showers going on into parts of eastern Arkansas and that was mainly along and south of Jonesboro. You can just barely see ghosts of those on the radar display west of Forest City into around St. Francis County in Arkansas and beyond that there's just really not that much going on at this point in time so we're not seeing a lot happening where it comes to rainfall purposes just yet but more possibilities of that uh, into and around through the course of the rest of the day. Uh, Julia Cavallo welcome to the show on Facebook thanks a lot for joining us and thanks to everybody for watching in on our Periscope broadcast for this morning. Uh, more information about what's going on in orbit if you haven't had a chance to see this going on there's currently a spacewalk in progress and you can see that by going to nasa.gov or searching NASA, dot, NASA TV and you can tune in to see more about what's going on. The astronauts started this at about 7.05 mid-south time and they'll be out and around the International Space Station normal repairs, maintenance, stuff like that, and that will be going on through about uh, 1 o'clock this afternoon, more or less. So they'll be out in space for about six hours or so. So if you'd like to see a little bit more about what's going on here, all you have to do is go to NASA TV at NASA.gov for more information. You can see uh, Mission Control uh, checking in on a few things going on there. Pretty cool to be able to see this going on live from Earth orbit, you really got to admit. We'll come back to take a look at that coming up here in just a little bit. Currently on the display showing little, if anything, going on uh, where it comes... Hang on a second, let me switch back to earthquakes here, getting back down a little bit closer toward ground level and showing not much of anything going on on the New Madrid fault line, so good news on that. Likewise, across much of the rest of the Mid-South, you can get more information about what's going on here by going to the Center for Earthquake Research and Information and that's available through the University of Memphis and we're going to be seeing again some hopefully quiet conditions where that's concerned. More seismic information and tons of it available on their web pages so if you'd like to see more Sari at U of M for more information. Dry across the area this morning we do have a few clouds drifting on through the area. View from Heidelberg Elementary in Clarksdale showing sunshine as the school day gets underway and likewise at Windyke Country Club clouds above and golfers below and things moving along pretty nicely 
mostly for right now, but pretty dry as we showed you radar out there. That's part of the problem where, again, we have anything involving anything in uh, the way of burning outside. Uh, for right now, again, the Mississippi Forestry Commission has not placed any burn bans at this point in time. Uh, anything allowed at this point in time in the way of outdoor activity would be uh, charcoal grills, propane gas heaters, propane gas grills out there used carefully and with great care. Uh, not allowed at this point in time. Campfires, bonfire pits, fire rings, burn barrels, uh, open debris burning, anything like that. But so far, there are no active burn bans in the state of Mississippi. Likewise, we don't have anything going on uh, into the state of Arkansas either. I've lost that page there. Let me give you just one second. Uh, to get that information back up here. Plenty of burn bans in Arkansas. 20 counties are under burn bans at this time, none of which are in effect for the News Channel 3 viewing area counties, but notice that they are starting to increase in number out there. More information about this website, go to Arkansas or arkfireinfo.org and you can get more information about what's going on out there. Wildfire danger is increasing. It's uh, rated as high for the southwest part of the state through the Washtaws and down toward northern parts of Louisiana. That's where the heaviest area of fire activity is expected to be in that location. Now Tennessee does not issue burn bans per se unless under extraordinary circumstances, but there is a fire season and we are coming up on that from October 15th through about May 15th. If you're going to be burning anything within 500 feet of a forest, grassland, or woodland, you do need a burn permit from the Division of Forestry. They're not required in containers like metal barrels with a mesh screen cover, but uh, you need to check your local laws and make sure that you are in a safe territory for that, or if you do need fire protection on something like this, especially when it's fairly dry like this. Burn safe TN for more on that. Tropics are getting active just this morning. Tropical storm Nate formed over the northeast coast of Nicaragua. Winds are at 40 miles per hour, so it is barely a tropical storm. And as it curves a little bit farther over the uh, northern portion of Central America, it's a good possibility that this may lose a little bit of strength. But as it gets out over the Bay of Campeche and into and around areas of the southwest Caribbean. It's more than likely going to become a tropical storm again or stay a tropical storm. Should it cover over portions of the Yucatan Peninsula and then become a hurricane as we get into around the weekend. So between Saturday morning and Sunday morning, this could become a Category 1 hurricane. After that, again, don't concentrate on the center dots right there that you see the uh, monikers H for hurricane, S for storm, D for depression. It could go anywhere in this cone zone. So we need to watch and see uh, what happens with that. It could curve a little bit farther back to the west. And in fact, the forecast this morning did manage to curve it back that direction just by a little bit more. So this is going to be something that we need to watch very carefully as the system continues to uh, develop and move over this area. Now again, with the circulation pattern around this thing, this thing could bring in a lot of moisture off the Gulf and move it up over portions of the Mid-South. So please keep it tuned to News Channel 3 and we'll keep you updated on where this thing is going. That's storm that's over Florida, not much of anything is expected to come out of that. Matter of fact, a 0% chance of anything developing there. And that's about it. We don't have too much of anything else going on out in the tropics as we get into October. Two months left of the season and good riddance to it once it gets through with this. Nothing showing up in the way of problems on the seven-day hazardous weather outlook. Very quiet out there. Although a few strong storms may be possible later on this weekend. We've gotten up to a two out of category five for the potential potential of stronger weather, not mentioning severe weather just yet, but this weekend could be something to monitor when it comes to potential stronger weather out there. The good news is, again, once Nate gets up this direction, it's going to knock that area of high pressure out from where it has been stuck for a while. And that is going to be, again, heading its way out. And that's going to allow cooler air to make its way down into the Mid-South area. So some changes are on the way. Where the temperatures are concerned, it's just going to take a better portion of the next several days to actually get this thing out of here and get some cooler conditions in. Rest of the day today, again, temperatures not exactly October-like. Back into the mid to upper 80s for highs. Chances for rainfall, minimal at best, about a 1% chance in summer. 
areas. Lows tonight in the upper 50s to right around the lower 60s. Highs on Friday, right about where they were today, back into the mid 80s. Uh, chances of rainfall not being seen throughout the forecast, and temperatures by the time Friday night football kicks off will be back into the mid to upper 70s to lower 80s. Winds will be out of the southeast about 5 to 10 miles per hour, so not a big problem with the passing game on Friday night. Heading into Saturday, more chances of temperatures back in the mid 80s and also more coverage of rainfall as we get into the areas of green that you see here. That's where we see about a 40% chance coming up from Dyersburg, Union City, Jackson, and just northeast of Memphis. That chance of rainfall will continue and overspread much of the area for Saturday night. Low temperature Saturday night, not that low, back in the mid to upper 60s. Heading into Sunday, temperatures warm but not quite as warm as they have been and chances of rain continue nearly 60% for northeast parts of Mississippi, south eastern parts of the viewing area in West Tennessee, less of a chance back toward Arkansas, low temperatures Sunday night back in the mid-60s, and then getting the chance of rainfall again greatest east of the metro area for Sunday night. Going to skip ahead by just a little bit and go forward to Wednesday and see temperatures for highs much nicer going back into around the lower to mid 70s. So the chances of cooler conditions are on the way. It's just going to take better part of a week for that cooler air to make its way on through. So Julia Cavallo, Walls, Mississippi will get some rainfall, but it's going to be this weekend, and that'll be about the best chance for it at this time. Don't forget to find out more about the next Skywarn Spotter training session. The next one will be in Huntington, Tennessee next Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. at the Carroll County EOC 210 Norandal Road or Norandal Drive. Janice Newman is the point of contact on that. Next one after that will be next Thursday, the 12th of October, Fayette County EOC on Highway 64 in Somerville. After that, it'll be coming up in Poinsett County in Lepanto, Arkansas, and the day after that in Corning, Arkansas at Clay County Ainley Community Center. Plenty more opportunities to learn more about severe weather, so stop by the National Weather Service for more information on what we're going to be seeing there. Iridium flare tonight. That'll be taking place at just about uh, 817 Hopefully it'll be clear enough out there. Skies should clear across much of the area through the rest of the day. You'll be looking down toward the horizon. This map's turned around so you can see uh, the northern horizon to be if you're looking straight up into the sky. So northern horizon up here, uh, north star right there, and just to the right of the north star at about 817, bright star will fade into view and then fade out just as quickly at about 817 tonight. And that's about the only thing that's really going to be able to be seen tonight uh, in and around the Mid-South area. Not much more than that. Join me for more on the Facebook page. Happy birthday to the late Robert Goddard, the father of modern rocketry. His birthday celebrated for today. More information coming up on my Twitter page as well. If you'd like to know more about what that looks like, all you have to do is stop by twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3, amateur radio, Picks from around the Mid-South from the Weather Underground Camera System Network out there. And you can see more information about what's going on with our forecast as well. And also, thanks to everybody for joining me on Instagram. I've gotten over 3,000 posts in the last few years. So thanks to everybody for dropping by and getting more information on that. One more time for the forecast around the Horn. Temperatures again for today will be back into the mid to upper 80s. Finally cooling off as we go way into the future as we go toward next week. But beyond that, it's going to be warm and humid and better chances of showers and thunderstorms the closer we get into and around the weekend. And if Nate gets up this direction, expecting the possibility of more problems with more rainfall early next week instead of clearing out pretty quickly. But hopefully Nate is going to move very fast through the Mid-South area. Catch my forecast on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio with Bob and Josh on Talk Back Live through 9 o'clock this morning. And of course I'll have more on Live at 9 and throughout the rest of the day today, News Channel 3 at noon as well. And also Tim Simpson having your forecast tonight starting on News Channel 3 first at 4. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onick with the latest edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for more on air and online from News Channel 3 in downtown Memphis.